Hello and welcome to another episode in the Godot Basics tutorial series. In this episode, we will be taking a look at Godot's version of a pivot point, which is called an offset. Now, a pivot point is a reference point for positioning, rotating, and scaling a game object. This reference point will come in a pair value that represents both the X and Y values in a X and Y coordinate system. The easiest way to think of a pivot point is just the reference point at which our transform portion of our node object will get affected at. And of course, offset is the name that Godot uses to refer to the pivot point. Now, let's take a look at a basic example of our offset. Now, I have here a sprite image, a blue Pikachu. However, you'll notice that at the center, you can see our reference point, our offset reference point. And lucky for us, Godot is kind enough to set our offset value into the middle of our sprite image. In this case, our offset value is zero and zero. One cool thing about the offset is that even when we change our sprite image, it will not affect our offset. So let's move our Pikachu and notice how our Pikachu moves in relation to our offset. However, our offset value does not change. And if we decide to move our offset value again, which is our reference point that controls our game object. Notice how our game object moves with the offset point and still retains its position in relation to our offset value. In this case, our offset value is now 200 and 100. This value is not an accurate depiction of where it is, but I wanted to keep the values straightforward. Moving on, let's go ahead and move our Pikachu back to being centered with the offset value. One thing to keep in mind again is that our offset value is where our position, our rotation, and our scaling will change in relation to. So let's go ahead and show you what happens when we spin our image while the offset is centered to our sprite. Now, as you can see here, our sprite just rotated 360 degrees and it rotated the way it did because our offset value is in the center. Now, let's go ahead and rotate our value with our object or rather our offset value at the top left corner of our sprite image. And as you can see here, if we decide to rotate our value 360 degrees, you'll notice that our sprite image rotates a little differently. And so for that reason alone, it is generally best to keep your offset value centered to your sprite image. The reason we want to keep our sprite images offset value in the center is because again, if you don't, our, in this case, our game object may behave differently than we would expect it to. I want to add another reason why we want to keep our offset value centered to our image, and that is when we want to calculate for boundary limits. For example, if we choose to move our Pikachu right and left, the formula for calculating that will be simple compared to if we chose our offset to be anywhere else outside of the center. One cool thing about Godot is that even though it gives us an offset value, in reality, Godot's 2D system is very close to a skeletal animation program. Another word for skeletal animation is rigging. Now, skeletal animation is a technique in computer animation which a character is represented in two parts, a surface representation used to draw the character and a hierarchy, keep that word in mind, a hierarchy set of interconnected parts, which we call bones. And our representation of characters are usually called a mesh or a skin. In Godot, you can think of a mesh or skin as an image. Now, skeletal animation is a really great technique to have, especially when you're dealing with 2D games, because we can take separate images, for example, and through rigging, basically putting images on top of bones, we can in fact create what looks like to us a complete image. However, we can control the minute animation details, giving us more animation options than, for example, taking in a sprite sheet. If you're interested in skeletal animation or you want to learn more, I recommend three. The first would be Spine Animation, which comes from the company Esoteric Software. They have a plugin for Godot. However, it doesn't come with all the features. The next choice could be Dragon Bones. They also have a plugin. I'm not sure if they keep up with that. However, I do recommend 
to look into a third option called Creature Skeletal Animation Software. And they actually officially support Godot, at least 3.0. And I emailed them and they said that they are looking to in fact support 4.0. However, take that with a little grain of salt. Moving on. One thing to note is that this video was recorded on June 2020, and so the information about Skeletal software may be out of date if you are watching from the future. So let's look at that hierarchy model we were looking at. So in our Skeletal animation hierarchy, you usually have a root, and there can only be one root in your Skeletal animation software, and beneath it you'll have bones and sub-bones. But when you're doing your animation, you may have something like this. You have a head, you have a right shoulder, and underneath that right shoulder you have an upper arm, and beneath upper arm you have a lower arm, and beneath lower arm you have a hand. Now the rule with Skeletal animation is that when you move something higher in the hierarchy, it affects everything beneath it. So for example, if you rotate the right shoulder, in real life you would expect the upper arm to move, the lower arm to move, and the hand to move. And so so that's how skeletal animation software tend to work. By moving something higher in the hierarchy chain, you move everything beneath it. And as you can see here, if we move right shoulder, we do not affect the head. And if we move our head, we do not affect the right shoulder. However, moving the right shoulder affects everything beneath it, and moving our hand does not affect anything above it. And as you can see here, you can sort of see the similarities between how we structure our skeletal animation images and bones to how we structure our scene tree in Godot. And one thing to keep in mind is that if you move, rotate, or scale the root bone, and in Godot the root node, you affect everything else. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So again, we have our Pikachu. Our Pikachu's positioned at x-axis 200, y-axis 100, and our root node is positioned at 0, 0 in the game world. Now let's go ahead and move the root position and see how it affects our Pikachu. Now we moved our root position to the same position that our Pikachu was in, which was 200, 100. And notice our Pikachu is now at the bottom right corner of our screen. But at the top here, we can see that Pikachu still holds the positional value of 200 on the x-axis and 100 on the y-axis. Now, why exactly is that? And it's quite simple. Even though our root node in the game world, or rather the game universe, is at 200-100, what Pikachu sees is different. Pikachu sees that in Pikachu's world, the universe starts at 0 and 0. So when we move our root node, our Pikachu's X and Y values do not change. However, they just move along in relation to where our root node is. All Pikachu sees is 0 and 0 and moves its positional value accordingly to whatever the parent node is. And in this case, the parent node would be the root node. Now there are three basic rules with the root bone, and in this case the root node in Godot, and that is one, never change the root node or root bone. So never change its position, never change its rotation, and never, ever, ever, ever change the scale. Now you can go a little soft with changing the position in Godot because it is half game engine. For example, if we would like our root node at the middle, one reason to do that is because when our Pikachu moves towards the bottom right by flipping Pikachu's value, for example, by changing the Y value to a negative, we can instantly teleport Pikachu to the top right corner and the same thing for bottom left. And you would in fact change the root node if you want something specific for your game. However, outside of game engines, the general rule is for your root node slash bone, don't change the position, don't change the rotation, do not change the scale. Now, if you must have the root node change position, rotation, and scale, the recommended way is to one, have a root node, but keep it again at zero, zero, because we never change it. However, what you do is you create a fake root node. That's a sub node of the root node. And from the fake root node, you put everything underneath it. And so everything underneath it thinks that this is the root node. However, we know better and we know that it's a fake node, or in this case a fake root node, and from the fake root node we can change its position, rotation, and scale without affecting the real root node. Well, that's all I have for you in this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for clicking the like button, and thank you so much for clicking the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Have an amazing day.